Okay, well, welcome back. Today we are talking about what teachers know about assessment. And this is one of those big picture topics that we need to understand to frame our discussions of testing and assessment. So this is a topic that we, we touched on when we talked about assessment and curriculum design. And I was talking about my own experience as a beginning teacher and how we had this idea of testing for no obvious reason. And that, of course, is something we want to avoid. Now, when we talk about what teachers know about assessment, we have a term for it, and we call it assessment literacy. And I'm very happy today to be joined by one of our former PhD students from Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand, who studied this, this topic in a Vietnamese context. She currently works at the University of Da Nang, and so I'm very happy to welcome uh, Dr. Lop, to talk to us today about assessment literacy. So it's great to be back and to be talking with you today. I have to say assessment literacy is something that I think many people don't know much about. In fact, it's even a term that people may not be familiar with. So let's start with asking you a definition. So how would you define assessment literacy? Um, assessment uh, literacy is a new term in uh, testing and assessment. And uh, assessment literacy uh, mentions about uh, knowledge and skills of the testing and assessment. Okay, okay. And so why is this important? Uh, assessment literacy is very important uh, because, uh, for example, teachers without uh, assessment literacy, then they don't know how to uh, design a test and how to administrate a test properly to their students and how to use testing and assessment to improve their students' learning and improve their teaching. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think that's a tremendously important thing for teachers to be able to achieve and to do. So, a very worthwhile goal. So how did you go about doing your research? Um, I uh, did my research in Vietnam and uh, my research uh, had uh, three phases. Uh, in the first phase, I look at uh, uh, language testing and assessment courses uh, offered at the uh, four uh, teacher training universities in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And in the second phase, uh, I developed a questionnaire uh, to measure their confidence levels in assessment uh, literacy. And uh, in the last phase, I, I traced uh, four pre teachers and tracked their development in assessment literacy. And did they get better? Yes. Oh, good. That's good. So, can you give us an example of how they improved? Yeah. Um, so, I, I did my research and uh, at uh, four uh, teacher training universities, and two universities offered a cost in testing and assessment, mm -hmm. and the other two, uh, they didn't offer a separate cost in testing and assessment. Mm. So at the university which offered a cost in testing and assessment, I could see a great development in the, the pre-survey teachers' assessment literacy. So for example, um, in the group of four pre-survey teachers that I uh, followed, uh, at uh, a university in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, so from the beginning of the practicum, uh, the four of them told me that they could not under they could only understand the theory of testing mm -hmm. assessment in their language testing and assessment course, mm -hmm. but they didn't know how to apply the theory into the practice. And they could when they first came into the practicum, they could see a lot of problems in reality. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the help of the school mentor, and at the end of the practicum in the interview, they told me that uh, they could uh, understand how to design a test uh, in the real life context, how to validate a test, mm -hmm. and how to administer a test in in a real life context, and mm -hmm. how to use uh, testing assessment, especially formative assessment. Uh, to improve uh, their teaching and their students' learning. Mm, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, the whole yeah. you know, major goal of assessment is yeah. to foster learning, to yes. make learning better than yes. it would otherwise be. Yes. Uh, would I be right in thinking the students who showed the most improvement were the ones who had assessment courses at their university? Yes. Uh, so, uh, which, 
with uh, training in testing and assessment, uh, the free service teachers uh, in my study could improve their assessment uh, literacy. Mm -hmm. So training in testing and assessment is very important and it should be the responsibility of the teacher training uh, universities to uh, offer a cost in testing and assessment for their uh, students mm -hmm. to have to, to prepare them for their the future job because you know testing and assessment is one of like a uh, huge task of teaching in real life mm -hmm. and it's the teachers according to research teacher can spend up to like uh, one half of um, their time on uh, testing and assessment activities really? yes gosh i didn't know that yeah um what about recommendations for policy makers and people like that. What recommendations do you make out of your research? Yeah, um, thank you for your question. I think um, uh, after this research, like, I strongly believe that assessment literacy is for everyone. Mm -hmm. Not only for uh, teachers, it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. Because um, different groups of related stakeholders in testing and assessment, if they are assessment literate, for example, if the policy makers, if they are assessment literate, then they could uh, implement um, more um, effective uh, programs in testing and assessment uh, to, to improve uh, teaching and learning in Vietnam, for example. And uh, they can make a better choice of like, which um, uh, ex uh, exam mm -hmm. they choose mm -hmm. for the students in Vietnam, for example. And for teachers, uh, if they are assessment literate, then they could, they can understand um, how to use testing and assessment mm -hmm. to improve their teaching and to improve students' mm -hmm. learning. And for parents, if you are assessment literate, then you know how to help your children to uh, uh, improve their learning and don't uh, put the pressure. Uh, mm -hmm. Like in Vietnam, you know, like parents are very stressful about yeah. testing and assessment. Not just in and, Vietnam. <laughs> and if they are assessment literate, then they could know how to reduce uh, yeah. those kinds of Fantastic, stresses. fantastic. And I guess we had a nice example in the video where we talked about proficiency assessment or perhaps where policymakers could have benefited from some assessment literacy in their choice of the exit exam for students from uh, Vietnamese universities. So, where are you working now? Are you working with pre-service teachers? Yes, um, I'm currently working at a College of uh, Foreign Language Studies at the University of Da Nang. And um, at my university, we train English teachers for um, mostly Central Vietnam, and uh, we are one of the fastest universities in Central Vietnam. Okay, so I'm sure we are all expecting your students to be the most assessment literate in Vietnam. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm trying to help them because, you know, assessment literacy is in very, very important. And I'm lucky to, to have my PhD uh, done in, uh, at Victoria University, and uh, I hope to to um, continue uh, to spread out the impact of uh, um, my research mm -hmm. on uh, teacher training in Vietnam and to help the Vietnamese uh, uh, pre-service teachers to become more assessment literate. And for, because I, I believe that if uh, we are more assessment literate, then the futures, the younger generations of um, of Vietnam will will benefit a lot from our assessment literacy. Yeah, absolutely, I think that's a wonderful goal to have, yeah. and I can only end by saying that assessment literacy is hugely important wherever you might be in the world. It's clearly something that we all need to know more about. So thank you very much for your time. It's been great talking to you, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. <laughs>